Let him cook. Let him cook now. Let him cook. I said, let him cook. But he was the chef on no. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? What's happening? What is happening? We are coming to you tonight with a late night broadcast. Make sure you share, like, subscribe. Share, like, subscribe. Share, like, subscribe. Share, like, subscribe. What's on the menu for tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Well, first and foremost, if you didn't know, this is on their next podcast. Brought to you by Bloodline Films from the Soil, Black American docuseries, where we travel all around the country, waking up the culture cuisine, and of course, the Black American grassroots advocates in pursuit of reparative justice. And of course, today's meal is definitely going to be served as out of the community kitchen, ladies and gentlemen. Let me go ahead and take a brief commercial break, real fast, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll get right back into this thing. This is on their next podcast, and I am Chef Steve. Yeah. I've been all over the world. I've noticed this about black Americans, and I'll stop here. We have more people trying to turn us around than I've seen for any other group anywhere in the world relative to what our situation is. That you've got teachers, you've got people that will just do something. If they find out you're legit, just help you because they want to see black folks make it. We do have this. This is lacking in other places, I can assure you. But you know what? Our desire to save people cannot be greater than people's desire to be saved and to help. Uh, so the people that do not want it, let them go. Uh, Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. I sure get it nowadays. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back really quickly, man. Listen. I just peeped that interview, not even an interview. It was just, it was just basically a, a stretched out hairline rant coming from Stephen A. Smith, y'all. It was real wild. This is going to be a very simple serving up tonight. Shout out to everybody that's tapping in with us real quickly. Like, share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe, like, share, and subscribe, family. Peace to all of y'all. Uh, this is a quick reaction clip, y'all. I'm not going to be in here too long today, but before we do that, you know I got to get my music popping. Now, let's go ahead and give you some context. Now, of course, you know Jason Whitlock. He was fired, right? The dude was fired from his job. So he kind of got reduced to a youtuber shout out to the youtubers like myself and the rest of y'all cats that get busy and any aspiring youtubers in the future shout out to y'all now unfortunately jason whitlock continues to troll he was a troll when he was on tv he's a troll now and of course everybody got to do something for some clout but he always been at that hairline of Stephen A. Smith. And Stephen A. really done had it up to the top of his hairline. I mean, that's, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't mean. He really done had it up to here with his hairline. You understand? 
Jason Whitlock has been a tyrant for quite some time. He did a lot of cooning when he was on mainstream television. A lot of chucking and chucking and jiving and always finding a reason to throw shots at black Americans. Um, and unfortunately for him, <laughs> the lick got hit right back onto him because he couldn't come through and blaze with that damn weird ass hat that he liked he used to run around with y'all remember this fat bastard you know y'all remember him <laughs> so he not really popping like he used to be anymore because yeah once you get off of that mainstream it really ain't what it is so now he's with blaze network okay he's with the blaze okay but y'all since y'all sliding in here we gonna bring up the video ladies and gentlemen we're gonna bring up the video since many of you i'm sure you haven't seen it right and i think that is necessary for context purposes okay of course i want to bring you know brace all of y'all Stephen a gets into his little bag like he likes to do you know how Stephen a got the rant and do all of this shit he likes to hear himself talk he's in the right profession ladies and gentlemen he's in the right profession so he's gonna hear himself talk on this but we're gonna bring it to y'all okay we're gonna bring it to y'all like we need to do that real quick so let's go ahead and pull it up family real fast okay let's go ahead and pull this thing up for y'all eyes on the screen ladies and gentlemen eyes on that screen let's stop the music I got to say fair use by the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowances are made for fair use for learning purposes, educational purposes, fair to the use. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe, family. Now, let's bring it up. Let's bring it up. Stephen A. Smith getting on Jason Whitlock's neck. <laughs> and for me, it's a real souffle. He souffled him. I mean, it's crazy, but I'll leave it up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> as a black man sitting in this seat, the level of vitriol that I have to absorb is something that I understand 99.99% .99 of the time. You're a former player and you want to crucify me, that's fine. You're somebody that was involved in some kind of public incident that I had to speak on, whether you're the wife or ex-girlfriend or some uh, of a former player or whatever, I get it. You're a present day athlete and you don't like my evaluation of what has transpired before our very eyes and what I'm witnessing, that's cool. But I swear to you, on everything that I love. It's not personal. I'm a sports reporter and sports commentator. That is what I have been throughout my career. It is my responsibility to tell you what I see through my lens, how I feel about it, what my perspective is, etc. It's not like I'm sitting at home with absolutely nothing to do and no obligation to touch on anything, but I feel the need to invoke and ingratiate my thoughts, opinions, et cetera, et cetera, upon the world. I actually get paid to do this. Oh, he flexing on him. He flexing on him, y'all. <laughs> he, he trying to flex on him. <laughs> trying to flex him. But, yo, let's keep playing this track, y'all. Stephen A laying the hairline all the way out there. And because of that, sometimes my opinions, my thoughts, my feelings, et cetera, are things that you would not like. But I have never lied to you. Ever. If I wrote a story, or I wrote an article, it's based on the things that I've been told, what I've seen, and what I feel. 
it is rare that I talk about myself on a personal level because my personal life is not anybody's business and I don't get into other people's personal life. It's not something that I do. Many figures in the world of sports find themselves in personal situations, not lawlessness, not unlawful things or anything like that, but there's plenty of situations, Michael, Sherry, Juvie, where I've seen certain things and I turned a blind eye and a deaf ear to it because it's none of my business. And I leave it alone. And one of the other things that I never do, I never attack my colleagues. I might disagree with something somebody says or does. I'm going to call Cap on that real quick. I got to call Cap. He attacked. Listen, if y'all in the chat, family, if y'all in, in the chat, did he not attack J. Will? Huh? Did he not attack J. Will when J. Will was standing up? Right? Stood up for, for the basketball player. You know, who decided to kneel, step out. Remember that time during COVID? I mean, during the vid, during quarantine, everybody was taking their stands. The dude Wilkins was on his type of time. And, and, and Stephen A tried to embarrass J. Will live. Yeah, I ain't forget that. Stephen A, man, don't try to come on here with this. I know you, I know you're going at Jason Whitlock. We get all of that. But don't try to play the saint mode. You understand? Let's keep playing the track, y'all. You know, also he attacked uh, uh, Max Kellerman. But, I, you know, I digress, ladies and gentlemen. Let alone got the man fired. But I'm a little ahead of myself. Let's keep playing this track. And I might have an obligation to speak on it because it's in the news or whatever. But I don't speak against my colleagues. Once humanity comes into play, that's a given. Here's the. What you mean you don't speak against your colleagues? We've seen it. Dog, you went on Club Shay Shay and said that you told upper management either him or me. I can't work with the dude. I'm not feeling him. Come on, Stephen A. Listen, just get to Jason Whitlock. Don't try to set it up. Just get to Jason Whitlock, nigga other that's not real work think about this for a second i'm supposed to be covering sports but i make a career out of talking about my colleagues that ain't work that's you finding some slick way to get a check because you can't get a job that's jason whitlock that's who the hell he is now i have sat back for years, at least nine to 10 years, saying absolutely nothing about this man. I never uttered the words fat bastard out of my mouth until a few months ago. So that means that the previous nine years, you never heard me speak on him at all. But now it's necessary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because you see, if you listen to the fat bastard, Oh, no. I didn't play high school ball, even though my coach's name was Harvey Stoller. It was Thomas A. Edison Vocational and Technical High School. I played there my senior year. I was in a basketball tournament at Fashion Institute of Technology where I dropped 27 points and got a scholarship because the coach came calling me after that and what have you. If you listen to him, I never had a scholarship to Winston-Salem State, even though it's on the books. Just call the university. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, I'm an honorary doctorate member. I have an honorary doctorate from Winston-Salem State University because of my contributions to Winston-Salem State. I'm called Dr. Smith. Has something to also do with the contributions that I make because I believe about upliftment. Yeah, that was I'm an ambassador play honorary. for HBCU Week, and I've partnered with Ashley Christopher and Mir Persicki in Delaware and others to generate over 10,000 scholarships in excess of over $65 million in scholarships for African-Americans. But this man will tell you I'm lying. 
He even went so far as to say my autobiography, where I talk about my mother, my father, my sisters, the business, my hiring and firing and rehiring at ESPN. I didn't write it. I didn't write my own memoir, which, by the way, is a New York Times bestseller. Something he wouldn't know anything about. Did you know that it's now on paperback? It just came out yesterday on paperback. Oh, no. Did you know that you could go to Amazon.com, straightshooterbook.com, or a bookstore nearest you to get my book in paperback? Do you know that when people are normally selling 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 copies, I've sold over 400,000? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? <laughs> oh, he but he will tell you, I didn't write it. He's seen my writing. Really? Oh. <laughs> Stephen A. getting beside himself, getting ahead of himself. This article is an article written on Deadspin.com. The title, How Jason Whitlock is Poisoning ESPN's Black Grant Land. Because remember, Bill Simmons, who's now at Spotify doing a great job, obviously had Grantland at ESPN and upon his departure, Jason Whitlock was supposed to take up the mantle and create a black website. For folks. Oh no. Oh. This article was written by a Greg Howard published on April 27th, 2015. The same Jason Whitlock that said he's seen my writing, the same Jason Whitlock that implied that I couldn't write the same Jason Whitlock that said that I'm lying. That I'm lying. What does this man do? Why would I call up this article? There's a plethora of reasons why I would do so, ladies and gentlemen. One of the reasons would be because it's as in-depth as it gets about how scurrilous, how trifling, how despicable this man is. But there's also another reason that I'd pick up this article. Let me read the graph to you that it says. Keep Look mind. at this nigga. He be Steve thinking he move. Steve, you got the chill. <laughs> this staff, the one Whitlock was praising by way of warnings that if the writers and editors wouldn't align with his vision, he would get rid of them, was not the one Whitlock wanted. The undefeated, because that was the name of the title before it ultimately became and escape. The Undefeated was originally meant to attract the best and brightest young black talent in the country. With Whitlock's aim set so high that he at one point seriously tried to recruit the Atlantic's ta Coates, the sharpest cultural commentator in the business today. As things worked out, though, those young writers comprehensively refused to work with him. Oh, no! So did big-name ESPNers like Howard Bryant, Jamel Hill, and Stephen A. Smith. I couldn't write, huh? While you were on Blaze TV, spewing that bullshit to people. Did you tell them that? Did you tell them how you stood outside, outside of First Take begging me to talk to you? Did you tell them that once the same article in Deadspin came out, Weeks later, you wrote a lengthy apology to me in an email begging me to forgive you. Peace to Vina in the chat. Is Stephen A cooking with grease or cooking with some bullshit? Shout out to y'all that's coming in here. Share, like, subscribe, share, like, subscribe, share, like, subscribe, family. Is Stephen A cooking with grease or margarine, niggas? That's what I need to know. He acting like he coming with it. But we, let, let's let's keep letting him play this shit. Let him play. Pointing out how you were betrayed by this particular writer so you know how I must feel that you betrayed me. Did you tell the folks that? You bitch. Did you tell them? Oh, no. That piece of shit. Oh, no. Did you tell them that? Oh. 
got the names. We got Jamel Hill. We got Howard Bryant. You want me to bring up the other writers that wouldn't work for you? Why it took you nearly two years to... Did y'all hear that, Stephen A? Not the company man talking like this. Hold on. Stephen A with the curse words. The, 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 Stephen A, I'm appalled, sir. You're a company man. Hold on. Let, let, let's see. Begging me to forgive you. Pointing out how you were betrayed by this particular writer. So you know how I must feel that you betrayed me. Did you tell the folks that? You bitch. Whoa. Did you tell them? You no. fat piece of shit. Did you tell them that? Got the names. We got Jamel Hill. We got Howard Bryant. You want me to bring up the other writers that wouldn't work for you? Why it took you nearly two years to get an article out? Because you ran that shit so bad you were running it into the ground? What a disgrace you were to John Skipper, the former boss of ESPN, or the host of others. <coughs> you want me to talk about that? Because I got receipts. I got the email. Want me to talk about that? Now, just for everybody that wants to understand, how could this possibly be? Because once upon a time, I actually tried to speak up for this damn cretin. I knew he was a piece of shit, but I said, look, maybe he's misunderstood. Why would I do that, ladies and gentlemen? Because sometimes as black folks, we get in our own way. We think that all of us must be of one monolithic thinking, that we need to be completely and totally aligned. And any deviation from that brings into question our quote unquote blackness. Martin Luther King was a man of peace. Malcolm X was by any means necessary. They can't possibly be on the same page. Even though their agendas was for the upliftment and the preservation of our race of people. Hold on, hold on. I got to stop right there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not buying a Stephen A. Smith. Don't do that. Don't invoke the names of the other ancestors. I, is that, that's just me. Some of y'all might slide with this, but I'm not. That's Stephen A. You need to chill, man. Stay in your lane. Everybody see how you buck dance, tap dance. You, you're a company man. You do all type of wild shit. Don't invoke because you need to get your lick. Don't invoke because you're trying to get this lick on a fat boy. All right. Y'all comment in the, in, the, in the comment section if y'all flying and sliding with that. Y'all let me know. Because this is some bullshit, Stephen A. But let's keep playing the track, ladies and gentlemen. So I understand when we talk about stuff like this. How people can sit up there and say, how did it get to this? How did it get to this? Remember when I got suspended years ago? You know what's out there writing stuff, smiling in my face one minute, talking smack about me behind my back, and then ultimately writing it? It was him. Remember when I supposedly used the, and people were speculating that he used the N-word on the air and all of this other stuff. He was the first one out there. Oh, no. Trying to say that I did it. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't do it on the air. In my humble opinion, I'm telling you that. However, it's not like I didn't use the N-word when I was off the air, when I was talking to my fellas, or I was talking to other folks who happened to be black. I am not a proponent of using that word often, nor am I advocating that that word be used now. I'm just acknowledging the guilt that comes associated with me in terms of when I was younger. But I was always saying we as black people communicate how we want to communicate with each other. I love John Wootman who's been associated with the Pritz Alliance, uh, you know, uh, the Pritz Alliance, the, uh, the Fritz Alliance, I'm sorry, Fritz Pollard Alliance. Sound like you're splaining. I'm getting a little splaining from you right now, man. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I've been following this, been following this low-key over the years. 
again, this has been a long, drawn-out situation among the two of these cats. And they needed to go for blows at some point, right? So let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Let's see where he's going to go with it. And we're going to get ready to crack it down. Quick reaction, and then I'm out of here. Love that man. Love his contributions to the NFL, but when we would get into it in the past on rare occasions, it wasn't that he wanted the eradication of the N-word, because I support that. My issue with him was, hey, you shouldn't be encouraging the NFL to fine us and penalize us for using it amongst ourselves. How can a race of people who actually made the word iniquitous be in a position to punish us for using the word with one another? I had a problem with that. And I stand by that, but I digress. My point is, in bringing up all of that, Jason Whitlock pounced on it because that's what he does. Oh, no. You see, what he does is he's the one that puts himself in front of white folks. The white folks. Not all white folks, not most white folks, but the white folks that dare we say may have a problem with black folks. He says, I'm your man. That's what he does. Hold on, family. Is this the real year of truth? You got your man, Steve. You got Stephen A. Smith dropping names. <laughs> That's a fact, being he's, he's extra dramatic. Stephen A. Smith in here dropping names. 2024 is off to one hell of a fucking start, family. One hell of a start, y'all. But let's play a little bit more of this, and we're going to shut it down. You think I'm lying? Ask ESPN. Ask Fox. Ask the Kansas City Star. Ask them all. Jamel Hill. Rob Parker. Chris Broussard. Skip Bayless. Yours truly. Along with a host of black folks all over this country. Every single one of them will confirm what the hell I'm saying about this piece of garbage. Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, as a black man, I often told y'all, I cannot imagine as a black man, knowing our history, Anything worse than a white supremacist. That is, until Jason Whitlock came along. He's worse than them. Hey, yo. <laughs> ah, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to stop right there. We're going to stop right there. Do y'all agree with motherfucking Stephen A. Smith, ladies and gentlemen? Leave it in the comments. Shit is real, y'all. 2024 is the year of truth. Everything happening in the dark apparently shall come to light and you know what here's the truth of the matter it seems like everybody is waiting for the right time to get they lick in so never take someone's silence as a weakness that's what i'm learning that's what i'm learning this year all right silence is not weakness silence is actual strength 
And see, I got to get a few licks off. But I'm going to determine and decide when I get my licks back. Because it's necessary. So ladies and gentlemen, leave those comments. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know. Do you rock with Stephen A's sentiment when it comes to Jason Whitlock? Or is he just capping and trying to ride the drama wave? Let me know in those comments. Ladies and gentlemen, again, this is on the next podcast. And you were just served up from the community kitchen. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, in a system of white degeneracy, you stand for nothing you fall for anything. My name is Chef C and I'm out.